Yo, welcome to the video. So today's install is going to be a really special one because it's a part that will hopefully solve what I think is one of, if not the biggest issues with the S2000. Um, it's been bugging me as long as I've owned the car. I've learned to kind of just deal with it, but I know that it affects a lot of drivers that are similarly sized to me. So let me go ahead and lay everything out and then I'll show you what I'm talking about. Today we're installing a backyard special lowered seat rail for the Honda S2000. Here it is uh, wrapped up in all its glory sitting on my JDM box. This is the same box that my headlights chipped in. So let me uh, pull the plastic wrap off and then we'll talk a little bit more about it. Backyard Special, if you're unfamiliar with the company, is easily one of the OG manufacturers of aftermarket parts for the S2000. And the product itself, this guy, this seat rail specifically, is probably as old as the chassis, which is pretty gnarly to say because the car is, you know, over 20 years old at this point. So the fact that you can still source these brand new is pretty cool. The seat rail itself is designed to bolt up to the factory bolt hole location. So you can see that it has like a lot of the same pickup points um, as stock and I'll actually pull over the stock rail to kind of compare side by side so that'll be pretty cool and it's supposed to effectively lower the seating position by 20 millimeters to a sporty position is what the website says which is pretty funny 20 millimeters doesn't sound like an absolute game changer but I'm really hoping that it's gonna make a significant difference because sitting lower in the car is something that I've been wanting as long as I've owned the s2000 sitting in the car with the camera held up to my eyes to give you an actual reference as to why I want to sit lower in the car so this is my actual line of sight while driving I'm 5 foot 11 and change so just under six feet and this is what it's like for me to actually drive the car and it's not terrible but it's definitely not ideal. Seeing the color of the stoplight can get kind of hard without having to duck your head. If you're driving up a really steep hill, especially if you're doing that fast, it can be also pretty difficult to see what is coming at you from up the hill. You have to kind of duck your head again. Uh, for me and kind of what I'm into, you know, I, I like filming POV type videos and that can get really hard if your POV is like all the way up here, right? From a safety standpoint, my head is pretty close to the metal framing of the soft top, which is not really cool. If I kind of dip my head in and out. I don't make full contact, but in the event of a crash, for example, where I might just kind of like hop a little bit in my seat, I would definitely bonk this thing pretty hard, which is not cool. So the other thing is that the roll bar, which sits just behind me, which is easily this car's like greatest safety asset, is like well below my head, right? Looking underneath the seat um, is kind of weird, but it's cool because it shows you sort of what this rail really does. So I don't know if you can tell, but there's a pretty good amount of space down there for the seat pan to actually be lowered. So um, that's what kind of what the seat rail does is it leverages that little bit of space underneath the seat that can be added to you know the space above your head. Now we're gonna uninstall the seats, put the seat rail on the new seats, and then do kind of like a two-way swap, and then we should be good. So normally you have these plastic trims sitting here when you pull the seats. Um, I actually used a marker and a mallet to tap this guy off. You pull out a couple of screws and then you can pull this guy outwards as well. So comparing the two rails side by side, the OEM design is actually a two-piece configuration. So you can see that the left and right sides are independent of each other and are linked only by this like steel braided cable that goes all the way across. The BYS rail is actually a single piece design and it's fixed. So the left and right sides are stuck in place and unified by like this steel beam that goes all the way across. It's welded in place, so it's definitely not going anywhere. Um, quick comment on the welds, they're actually pretty solid, beefy welds, pretty much all the way around. Um, probably not the prettiest, but very functional. And the gauge steel that they use is also super, super thick, a lot thicker than OEM. So on the stock seat rail, you can see that the forwardmost mounting location is actually a little bit higher than it is on the BYS seat rail. And the same is true for the rearmost mounting location for the seat pan. It's actually also a little bit higher than it is on the stock seat rail. On the rear, the seat rail looks like they ditched the stud that's used from factory and they replaced it with a bracket and a welded nut. So that seems actually a little bit more simple to me. Next item on the list is pulling the stock seats. So I already got ahead of myself by pulling the negative terminal on the battery, which is something you wanna do anytime you mess with any safety related equipment, which includes seats, uh, steering wheels, airbags, anything of that sort. So I did that. Something I always do is I always pull door sills anytime I have any work to do with the seats because I don't want to scratch these and they're already ugly enough. Lean this guy backwards. Don't forget to pull connectors before you actually take the seat out. So 
This is the first one. One of these, I believe, is for the airbag and the other is for seating position, so. There we go. Oh, oh, dang, there's probably a better way to have done that, but you live and you learn. Now is also probably a good time to get this vacuumed, so I'm gonna get started on that. So there are two things that we're gonna pull off of the stock seat now that we have it out of the car. The first being the seat belt receptacle, which is here along with its harness and the seat position sensor. As far as I know, these are connected to my car and can't be swapped across cars. So if you know differently to me, then please comment down below. But for the sake of this install, I'm gonna pull both of these off. So now getting started with the reassembly process, I'm actually just gonna try and throw stuff on and then sort of see what order I need to put things back in. I'm gonna loop it in between the cushion and the rail, kind of same as factory. This guy goes in there. You can see that there's a provision for the seat belt buckle. So it actually feels like you're using basically all of the same hardware as stock. These nuts go right where they belong as well. So the weird thing about this install is that it's a little bit of a retrofit because early models didn't have seat position sensors like the 06 and up models did. So there isn't really a provision for where to install this necessarily. So you might have to just toss this under the seat. Everything online says that that should be fine. So as much as I don't like doing that, that might end up being the case, but um, we'll see how it goes. So what I am gonna do is I'm gonna try to fix as much of this to the seat as I can because I actually don't really like the idea of all of this just kind of dangling there, so. Bam. So I'd like to attach the sensor to some part here, but I'm not actually 100% sure what slides and what doesn't. Um, I know this actuates. It's hard to know where I should really attach it without knowing what part of the seat rail is stationary when the rest of the mechanism is sliding. So I might just have to leave this here for now. So a quick little design difference. The backyard rail actually turns these two um, mounting locations into studs versus the actual bolts that you use from factory. So the last design difference I mentioned earlier is ditching the stud here that was there from factory and replacing it with this uh, bolt. So there's a welded nut on the back side and it's a little bit easier to install in my opinion just because the stud gets in the way when you're fitting the seat back. So here is your first look at the backyard special lowered seat rail fully installed onto the stock seat and pretty interesting stuff going on. So first and foremost, obviously the seat rail by design introduces this gap in between the lower and upper seat cushions, which is pretty interesting. Um, so I'm really curious as to you know what that feels like in the car, if it like kind of messes with lumbar support or that kind of thing. I actually have a pretty bad back to keep it real with you, so we're gonna see if this flies or not. The other thing is that it actually retains this sloping angle that the stock seat has from factory, which I was really curious about because kind of by judging the seat rail, it felt like that might not be the case. It's kind of funny because the seat pan is actually so low that it's making contact with the cardboard and not the lower mounting points of the actual seat rail itself. So that's good because what that means is that this seat rail is sitting as low as possible with the stock seat. Scrubbed out a couple of spots on the carpet and got the entire floorboard vacuumed and this thing looks super good. I'm really happy with the way it turned out. Um, I actually like the, um, the red carpet. I think it's gonna look really cool and kind of unique with the black seats and everything else um, nice and black when I'm done with it. So uh, anyway, uh, time to put the seat back in the car. Next, I'm gonna start pulling the passenger side seat rail. Got the kick panel off. So the passenger side has actually got a couple more clips that you need to be aware of. So again, make sure to pull these before you actually pull the seat because you might end up breaking some of them. So last thing to be aware of on the passenger side is also gonna be this bolt here. The passenger side has a seat belt that actually bolts up to the seat and not to the frame, so it's kind of tricky. Okay, so I have my passenger seat out finally, and this is gonna be a little bit tricky because what we're gonna do is we're gonna be swapping everything over from the new seat onto the old seat rail. These seat rails are actually programmed to the ECU. The sensors and everything underneath them are specific to my car, so they can't be swapped. 
uh, from one car to another without a trip to the dealership for a reprogramming session. So what we're going to do is disassemble both seats, swap the cushions onto the old rails, and then these should be ready to go back in the car. Passenger seat is finally laid out, so we have the backrest, we have the seat pan, and we have the appropriate rail, so now time to throw it all together. Okay, and just like that, a couple hours later, these are ready to go back in the car. So we have the new cushions on the stock seat rail that came with my car. So this is the correct seat rail. We have good cushions. Another set of really good cushions on the backyard special lowering seat rail. So these are ready to be thrown back in the car. Okay, so I got ahead on installing the passenger side. So this is all buttoned up, plugged in, good to go, no issues. Got the driver's side mocked up as well, not quite bolted down yet because we have to plug the battery back in and make sure that we're not gonna get an airbag light for any other reason. But I'm gonna sit down now to give you an actual impression of what I think of the seat rail. <sighs> wow. Yeah, this is, yeah, cool, man. I, huh. Huh. Wow. <laughs> cool, dude. Yeah, this is rad. All right, so I've been sitting for a minute or two trying to just like kind of take it in and decide how I feel about it. And I can confirm that there is a solid difference. Um, the 20 millimeters might be understated. I feel like it's actually closer to an inch. I for once feel like I'm actually looking up at the um, airbag warning on the sun visor, which is pretty cool. Normally I was like pretty like head level with it. Um, the gauge cluster is like the biggest uh, difference. I like I actually feel like I'm looking at it versus down on it. That was like a big thing for me um, pretty much since I've owned this car. If I close the door yeah for sure like elbow room is definitely kind of more sucked up which is rad there is definitely definitely more headspace which is really cool that's like the only thing i wanted with this car was just literally more headspace so this bracket here that i showed you earlier was really close to my head and now i gained a lot of room up there which is rad um the roll bar now if i like push my hair down is probably right around um, an acceptable height. So I wanted to give you an updated POV of what my driving position is like and sort of what my view is out of the car with the lowering seat rail. So I have the camera pretty much at eye level right now and hopefully you can tell that there has been a little bit of an improvement. I'll overlay the old footage right now to kind of compare where my vision was at previously. So this is definitely a big step forward. I'm really happy with the way this came out for the most part. The funny thing too is that there's actually a little bit more room underneath the steering wheel between my legs so this is really really nice i actually didn't realize how tight it was before until we lowered the seat rail just a little bit this is kind of a complete look at the interior as it sits currently definitely still a work in progress it looks a little bit off if i'm being honest with the red door cards and the black seats um, but i think my eyes are still kind of just adjusting to the layout a couple of other things I want to get done here pretty soon from like a restoration standpoint, but this car has come a long way. I mean, the steering wheel is pretty mint. We scored that a little while ago. Got really lucky on the seats. Um, so next is probably something on the center console area with maybe something planned for the door cards down the road. But um, progress is progress, you know? I'm super happy with it so far. So next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna connect the battery and then we're gonna turn the car on and I'm gonna double check for any airbag warnings because that seat position sensor is making me kind of nervous. Um, I've read a lot of things online that say that it shouldn't be a problem and then I read some things that said that you wanna be careful with it. So there's only one way to figure it out. So let's go ahead and connect the battery and then turn the car on. Dude, yeah. <laughs> yes, dude, nothing wrong with it. That's good. With that said, thank you for checking out this video. Thank you for making it this far. If you did, I genuinely hope that you got something from my experience. Um, and I think that I can confidently recommend this modification. It's pretty rad for what it is. You know, if you really want to keep as much of the interior as stock as possible while still lowering the seating position just a little bit, whether it be for comfort or for a more sporty feeling, I think that this is a pretty rad solution um, in its own category. So um, that being said, thank you again for checking this out. I will catch you in the next one.